Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will dive into the world of Docker. So in this session, we will be looking at top 15 interview questions that you can expect uh, as part of your interview questions. Now, these interview questions will help you to master your Docker and also ace those uh, interviews. Now, whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting your Docker journey, stick around for some valuable insights. Uh, once again before i start off with the session please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so let's get started with this the first question we have is what is docker now docker is one of your uh, container orchestration uh, tool that we have uh, it's this is one of the very popular tool that we have so this is another open source uh, uh, platform that is available for us and we can use this to deploy our uh, applications uh, within lightweight and portable container so you know if you want to containerize your applications if you want to uh, run your applications as microservices we can utilize your docker to uh, do that so these containers this uh, will help us to create package and this will have all the dependencies needed to run this application so these uh, dependencies will be available in standardized units allowing the application to run consistently across different environments right so that's where your docker um, can be useful that's another uh, containerization tool that we have that helps us to create portable uh, containers and also help us to automate the deployment of our applications moving on to the next question explain the difference between a container and a vm which is your virtual machine so your container now that's your lightweight um, uh, environment which gives you it's an isolated environment this runs on your shared operating system so basically um, all the containers will be running on the same OS so the OS will be shared so it's your shared OS uh, kernel and this allows for your um, containers or your applications to start up much faster so the uh, startup time will be much faster when compared to your VMs and also you'll have very reduced resource utilization when compared to the virtual machines now the v VMs on the other hand it completely emulates an entire physical computer so it looks like a physical computer Computer, including having its own operating system and also it requires more resources to run when compared to your containers so at any point if you have created any virtual machines you will know that we will need to divide our hardware like your hard disk your ram and it will have its own os all right so we'll have your host operating system and then we'll have the vm operating system as well but in terms of your containers we'll have the host operating system which will be shared by all the containers running on that particular machine the next question we have is what is a docker image now your docker image is a read only template which helps us to run your docker container so this docker image will contain all the instructions needed to start up your container so what uh, base os you want what uh, uh, packages you want to install any services you want to start so all those instructions will be available within your docker image so this will contain everything needed for your uh, application to run so including the code the runtime the binaries the libraries the dependencies everything will be available within this docker image okay so these images these are built using a docker file so this docker file is a text file which contains all your instructions so whenever you want to build a docker image we make use of your docker file and then we can store these docker images in a docker registry like a docker hub so if you want to share the images with other um, uh, users within your team you'll need to put that in a common location a shareable location which is your docker registries for example docker hub is a docker registry moving on to the next question explain the role of a docker file so as i was talking the docker file so that's your text file where we can pass all our instructions for building a docker image so whenever you want to build a custom image we make use of a docker file we put in all the instructions in the docker file and then when we build the docker file it gives us the uh, uh, docker image so this docker file will contain all the instructions needed for us to build our image so it can contain instructions like your uh, base image the commands that you want to install uh, the dependencies any configuring your, your settings and also defining how the applications should run inside the container all those instructions will be uh, provided within the docker file and when we build this uh, image this image will have this uh, all these instructions so that when we start the container all these instructions will get executed 
So Docker files are used with the Docker build command to create your custom Docker images. So once you're done creating your Docker file, we'll be running this Docker build command, which will start um, executing those instructions to create our custom images. The next question we have is what is Docker Compose and how is it used? So Docker Compose is a tool which helps us to run multi-container Docker applications. All right. So uh, whenever you want to run multiple containers at the same time, we can make use of your Docker Compose. For example, let's say you want to run a front end and a back end uh, together. So a front end container and a back end co uh, container together, we can make use of your Docker Compose for that. So this is a YAML file where we give all the instructions. So we specify the services, the networks, uh, the volumes, everything will be defined within this YAML file. And this will allow the developers to define and manage complex application environments with ease. So this Docker Compose, uh, like I said, this is used whenever you want to run a multi-container uh, applications. The next question we have is explain the concept of Docker Swarm. So Docker Swarm is basically whenever you want to create a cluster. Okay, so Docker Swarm, that's your container orchestration tool provided by your Docker engine. Okay, so whenever you want to create a cluster that is multiple machines, we make use of your Docker Swarm. Okay, so this allows us to create and manage your cluster of Docker hosts, which we can call it as your nodes. And this will help us to deploy and scale our um, containerized applications across multiple machines. So whenever you want to uh, work with multiple machines in Docker, we make use of your Docker Swarm. So this consists of multiple nodes, which will be connected with each other. And this helps us to deploy and scale your containers across these multiple machines. Uh, so Docker Swarm, it provides features like your service discovery, load balancing, and high availability by uh, making use of your multiple machines. The next question we have is what is the difference between Docker Swarm and Kubernetes? So Docker Swarm is a simple and built-in orchestration tool provided by Docker, whereas Kubernetes is a more feature-rich and standalone container orchestration platform. So when, uh, when it comes to features, Kubernetes always wins, wins. It provides you lots of advanced features which are not available in your uh, Docker Swarm. So this provides us advanced capabilities for your scaling, self-healing, managing the containers applications at scale, making it suitable for complex production grade environment. So that's where your Kubernetes uh, really wins when compared to your uh, Docker Swarm to uh, use as your container orchestration tool. The next question we have is how do you share data between uh, Docker containers? Now for this, we can make use of uh, Docker volumes or bind mount. So whenever you want to share your data across containers, these are two options we have. Now volumes are managed by your Docker and we can make use of this when you want to persist your data, even if the container is stopped or removed. Okay, so you want persistence data irrespective of the status of your container, we can make use of your Docker volumes. Bind mounts, on the other hand, it creates a directory link between your host and your containers. Okay, so the directory that you have on the host machine will be linked with the uh, container machine and this allows for direct access to the host file. So that's where we can make use of your bind mounts. So whenever you want to share your data between your containers, between your host machine and your container machines, we can make use of your Docker volumes and bind mounts. Next question we have is what is Docker Hub and why is it used? So Docker Hub, that's your cloud based repository for storing and sharing your Docker images. So once you're done building your Docker images, if you want to share these Docker images with other uh, people in your team or other projects, you will need to put these images in a shared repository. And that's where your Docker Hub can be useful. So this provides us with a centralized location, uh, which can be used by your developers to find, distribute, and collaborate on your Docker images. So Docker Hub also offers features like your automated builds, image versioning, and also integration with your CI CD pipelines. So this Docker Hub, that's your central repository where we can store our images. We can collaborate with other developers on your Docker images. The next question we have is explain the concept of Docker networking. 
so docker networking mainly allows the containers to communicate with each other and also with the external network so whenever we want the containers to talk to each other uh, over a network we have a docker networking and when we talk about the docker networking it provides us with a various uh, network drivers so we have the bridge network we have the host network we have overlay we have macvlan network and these different different networks this facilitates the communication between the containers and uh, connect the containers to different network environments so whenever uh, we create our containers by default the containers will be created in the bridge network which allows the containers to talk to each other over your network the next question we have is what is docker swarm mode and how do you initialize a swarm so docker swarm mode enables uh, native clustering and orchestration features in docker engine so docker swarm is used whenever we want to create a cluster of uh, remote machines um, multiple machines so if you want to initialize your swarm then we'll be running this command which is docker swarm init on your manager node so when you are setting up your uh, docker swarm you'll need to decide which machine is going to be your manager machine and then on that machine you'll be running this command docker swarm init now when you run this command what will happen is this will generate a token we will need to take that token, go to the worker nodes and execute that uh, command which will allow the worker nodes to join the manager nodes. That will help us to create the Docker Swarm cluster. The next question we have is explain the purpose of Docker volumes. So Docker volumes, it provides us a way whenever we want to make our data persistence and used by your docker containers so whenever you want to uh, persist your data irrespective of the status of your containers we make use of your docker volumes for that so this allows the data to be shared and stored independently of your container life cycle so whether your container is stopped or uh, deleted the data would still be available and that ensures that the data is persist even if the container is removed or replaced so volumes are also used for sharing data between containers so if you want to share some data between multiple containers we can make use of your docker volumes for that next question we have is how do you monitor docker containers and services so docker it provides us with several built-in monitoring tools and integration options for monitoring your containers and services uh, so some of the options that are available uh, includes docker stats which can be used to monitor real-time container resource utilization you also have docker events which can be used to monitor the container lifecycle events and also there are third-party solutions which can be used to integrate with docker api okay so we can utilize this to monitor your containers as well as the services that we are running on docker the next question we have is what are docker labels and how are they used so docker labels these are simply your uh, key value pairs which can be attached to your docker objects now these docker objects can be your containers images volumes and your networks so these docker labels these are simply your metadata so any any additional information that you want to provide about your docker objects we can pass them as key value pairs and this allows for easier organization management and identification of your uh, docker objects okay now this mainly helps in filtering uh, querying and automating your docker operations that's where we can make use of your uh, label so maybe let's say you have 100 containers and you want to filter that container you can make use of your labels for that or if you want to query you can make use of your labels for that which is your metadata next question we have is explain the concept of docker security so docker it provides us with several built-in security features that helps us to protect the containers and the docker environment now some of the features includes your uh, container isolation through namespaces and control groups also known as c groups we can make use of your image scanning for any vulnerabilities we can control the access using a uh, docker contained trust and also runtime security options like your C Linux and App Armor. So we can utilize all these things to provide uh, security features for the containers that we, that we are running on the Docker environment. So that brings us to the end of our uh, Docker interview questions and answers. I hope you found this um, 
insights valuable and that they will help you in your docker journey if you found this video helpful please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more content share your thoughts or any specific topics that you would like me to cover in the comments uh, section thank you for watching i will see you in the next video